My dad died 10 years ago and um, he died of cancer. His last month, I suppose, were quite difficult in a hospital and I think it's the end of your life for very important days and how you're treated in those days. And I think the importance of family's been around and have been able to be part of that time and you know the environment that people are in um, I think hospitals can be a very alienating experience, a very difficult experience in your last days. Where you die and how you die matters. A cosy, warm, welcoming environment, as close as possible to domestic surroundings, is what we'd all want for a loved one or for ourselves as we approach the end of life. People need sanctuary, far from the busyness of hospital life away from the strange smells, unfamiliar faces, the clanging sounds, all of which make up typical hospital life. Unfortunately, we've all heard some stories of where a person's end of life care was far from ideal or where the death was handled badly, leaving relatives with emotional scars that are slow to heal or may never heal at all. In the hours before Dave died, the patient opposite him was calling the nurse in a very insulting manner, using horrible language to describe her and saying, come here, you so-and-so, and everything. And I, part of me was kind of very busy with Dave, but another part of me was absolutely outraged that this would be going on when Dave was dying, that nobody was caring enough for our dignity, that somebody could be dying and this is allowed to happen in it. It's about how much kind of, how much importance and significance is put on somebody dying. It was very wrong that he died hearing those sounds. All the beds were surrounded by what seems to be general in hospital, a flimsy, a flimsy curtain. It was useless. It wasn't worth anything in terms of privacy. Now, Carmel was suffering from ovarian cancer and this led her to um, call for assistance with uh, toiletry duties. As she couldn't walk to the... Uh, nearest bathroom, they brought in this outdated, wretched thing, I think they are, this thing called a commode. But this was wheeled across a ward uh, at any time during the evening when there would be other people there and other men there visiting their relatives. And Carmel felt very embarrassed. Coming to the last week of her life where it was very obvious to all concerned and the nurses, and one could see that they, they had compassion for her but knew that she was on the way out because I had been told and they all knew it. And this was where I found more particularly the lack of dignity. I asked, was there any other accommodation available whereby she could uh, have our last few days in privacy? And uh, there wasn't. Well, when you're not in a single room, the quality of the discussion you might want to have is always compromised. People need the space and privacy at the end of life to allow them to say and to hear deeply personal things, to get things off their chest, to tell people they love them. After all, how can you say goodbye, ask for or give forgiveness when there are maybe five other people in the ward, a pile of visitors, the TV on, and the staff working away all around? So I think if, if around the, the bed at least you can create familiar conditions or domestic conditions or kindly or silent or something approaching the sacred, the secret at least, uh, that's what would be all to the good. There is a need for more single rooms in Irish hospitals and the evidence for the benefit they provide is overwhelming. They improve infection control rates, provide a better environment for communications between patient and clinical staff and crucially between patients and their families. But the scarcity of single rooms is just part of the story. And besides, having a choice is the key issue. There are problems with the layout of wards and facilities for patients and families to gather and support each other at such a crucial time are few and far between. Confidential consultation spaces for the patient and their doctor and medical teams can be cramped and unsuitable where they do exist. And there's often nowhere for families to gather and talk or take a break away from the bedside vigil. It could all be so different. 
What's needed are sacred spaces in public places. Comfortable, quiet areas that provide sanctuary from the noise and busyness of hospital life and allow people to experience the solidarity of family and friends. With some thought, imagination and a basic awareness of the impressive evidence that underlies modern healthcare design, things can be changed for the better. The Hospice Friendly Hospitals programme, together with the Health Services Executive and the Department of Health and Children, has developed a Design and Dignity Grants Scheme to improve facilities for end-of-life care in hospitals in Ireland. The types of projects to be funded include meet and greet spaces close to reception where relatives can be briefed before going to a ward. The layout of outpatients and consulting rooms where bad news regarding a diagnosis may first be broken. Oasis spaces for large corridors where people can sit and talk informally with each other or with staff. Multifunctional rooms which allow use by staff but are more like sitting rooms than offices. Places where staff can meet with family members or where a person in an open ward can be brought to for a meeting that requires privacy. Creating more private areas in open wards and carving out single rooms and toilet facilities where possible are essential. The routes to mortuaries and the mortuaries themselves are major challenges. Excellent design elements will be the key to these projects, such as the use of colour to improve mood and comfort, choosing softer yet still sterile textures that minimise clanging noises, also displaying artworks that are food for the soul. For families on the bedside vigil phase, it's important that the provision of simple, comfortable overnight stay and refreshment facilities is considered. Several times in, in my life I've been in the presence of people as they, as they passed away. It has been a privilege to be there and it's given me an insight into what is good in hospital care in Ireland at the end of life and also what needs to change. It was very wrong that he died hearing those sounds.